carbon plated super shoes aren't renowned for their durability. But how much of a problem is this and how much performance do they actually lose? We decided to test it. Sit Mark. Today we're gonna to test how much performance used super shoes lose. Super shoes, that is new running shoes, built with modern foams built around carbon fiber plates have revolutionized running in the last few years. Now that is because those super foams provide performance energy return of 87 to 90%. When compared to good old EVA, which only returns about 70% energy, you can see why everyone is running in the new super shoes. But super foams don't perform like that indefinitely. Whilst good old EVA can last up to a thousand kilometers with very little performance loss, super foams tend to fall off a performance cliff where they suddenly lose their performance quite rapidly after a certain amount of kilometers. How many kilometers? Well, that depends on the manufacturer's stated claims. We're gonna test today how much marks have lost. It's worth noting, of course, that these results will be specific to both the shoe and the runner, but hopefully it'll still be interesting. Mark is currently testing the performance of his brand new on Cloud Boom Echo 3s. And we're gonna see exactly how much a good pair of super shoes can do for his running economy. And then we'll put him in his old worn out pair and see how much performance they lose. Well done, Mark. Worked up a bit of a sweat there. Certainly did. Yep. Now we've got the old shoes. So, firstly, how old are those shoes? Do you have a mileage counter on them? Not exactly. I was trying to work this out. I've used it basically for most of the big features on the channel for the last 18 months. So, things like Sam Lolo's hardest workout, the in a couple of the big workouts for that 200k run week I did. Took them um, bikepacking. I did take them bikepacking. Yeah. They got very muddy. It's an off-road trial. All sorts of things in them. So uh, I think we're, we're definitely over 300k. Could even be knocking on the door of 400k. Well, typically manufacturers claim that these super shoes last 450 to 600 kilometers. But independent tests have actually shown that not many of them are still performing after about 400 to 450 kilometers. And their performance actually drips quite badly. So badly, in fact, that some of them are worse than good old EVA. Well, there's only one way to find out. Back on the treadmill, Mark. Brilliant. <laughs> Sit, Mark. All right, we're back from the lab. Mark, how was your runs? Um, good. I always enjoy running in carbon super shoes. With a mask on your face. Yeah, yeah. great fun. <laughs> I, a few more it. tests than I was expecting to end up doing today, but anyway. Yeah, um, well, we also did skip a couple of tests. We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> so, these are the results. Mark used 205.8 milliliters per kg per kilometer in his old shoes. And he used 203.8 milliliters per kg per kilometer in his new shoes. So two milliliters per kg per kilometer better. Now that's a running economy measurement, don't worry too much about the numbers. The point is, his new shoes are more economical. It is worth pointing out, however, that that doesn't necessarily translate to a 1% improvement in actual speed or actual running performance. It means his economy is 1% better, which could actually translate to no gain whatsoever in, in his actual speed, uh, it might mean that he can run 1% further, potentially, maybe not faster at all, but the shoes are definitely better. Yeah, and we've also got VO2 max or VO2 scores, so milliliters per kilogram per minute, um, and that also sort of follow the same trends. So in the old super shoes, I had a score of 56.6, whereas with the new shoes, 56.05. So essentially it's taxing or putting less tax on my body in the new shoes. But it's a very small amount, really. Mm. But you did say that you noticed a difference in the actual feel. Now, was that just psychological? Well, there was part of lacing up and putting on a brand new pair of white super shoes. That I was like, oh, wow. And I just suddenly felt really good in them. Um, in reality, actually, when I was running, 
there was very little difference. The only difference I actually thought I was feeling was the heel strike. Now, I got used to running in the new shoes, first off, and the timing of when that foot struck the ground. And then with the uh, the old shoes, it felt different. And then I was like, what's going on here? And I analyzed after. And actually, you can see if you line up the foams that the old shoes are very slightly more compressed. So the foam has mm. lost some of that maybe rebound in there, which might, you know, um, account for the exactly. lack of loss of economy. Now, 1% economy, it's, is it worth £220 though? <sighs> I mean, I don't know. It's it's still this. I mean, this is small. This is small. And uh, what I thought I came away from this actually going, you know what? I thought it might have been bigger the gap, and I'm actually kind of slightly reassured, having done a number of events in these, going, God, so you're keep are these dead? These for a bit longer. Yeah, so I think I will. I actually <laughs> probably can get a little bit more out of them, and I'm really not giving away. I mean, grand scheme of things, that is small. Um, yeah. Well, we do have another video coming up because then we went on to compare these shoes to a cheap pair of EVA shoes and see if your old worn out carbon shoes are actually faster than your just a cheap pair of EVA shoes because obviously it's lost a fair amount of performance. But there was one other test that we were hoping to do and we didn't actually get to there and that is testing the foam fatigue because these super foams are subject to foam fatigue. That is, after you've run 20 or 30 miles in them, they're gonna lose some of their spring, lose some of their bounce. Uh, how much? We don't actually know, and none of the manufacturers are telling you either. Uh, so we were going to test that, but Mark didn't want to go and run 25 miles in between two tests. Well, four so, actually. So. Yeah. So we're going, we, we'll go back and we'll get them to do that because I think that is really interesting. They say 48 to 72 hours before your foam actually recovers to its normal 90% return on energy that it gets initially. And that's really interesting because the back end of the marathon, it's not just your legs feeling tired, it's actually your foam starting no, to get I'm tired. I'm genuinely very excited to do that test. That one coming soon. Yeah. But coming sooner than that, because we actually already filmed it, is these shoes versus a cheap pair of shoes. I hope you guys have found this interesting, uh, this little comparison. And again, we must point out, it's very subject to the runner and also the shoes. So you might not get the same results in your old pair of super shoes versus your new pair of super shoes. But with these old shoes and this runner, 1% improvement on your new shoes. Yeah, nice one. Well, um, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. See you next time.